this is episode six of Time to Talk Hub with me, Fayahune, and my lovely other host, Vanessa. <laughs> name this time, brilliant. And I came in at the right time. I'm winning at life today. <laughs> today we are talking about, which is a major thing in both of our lives, sleep. And we thought it'd be a good topic because the weather is absolutely amazing. Some people are loving it, some people are not loving it. But sleep, if you like it or not, is quite hard in the heat. But also, we're going to then take it back to mental health and just sleep and how much of a big deal it is. So, Vanessa, do you want to take it away? Yeah, um, I think sort of the weather is, is had, I think there's a lot of people that are struggling. Um, I I was up this morning watching the, the lightning and the, and the rain and the thunder and, uh, um, you know, it was lovely. Um, but then obviously it got humid again and it's the humidity, I think, at the moment. So there are a lot of things that you can do to, to sort of help with sleep. Um, if you are finding that you're, you know, too hot, um, a little trick that I used to do is um, take a dry tea towel and uh, stick them in the freezer. Uh, and what that does is then it literally is just like a cooling blanket. So put that on the back of your neck and that sort of thing. Don't do what I did and stick a pack of, um, I stuck a pack of wipes in the freezer because I thought, oh, it'd be so nice just to wipe my face and stuff. It froze solid. <laughs> so uh, I was like, oh, that's not what I was intended. Uh, so yeah, stick it. Yeah, I couldn't get I could not pull them apart um so uh by all means I um you know stick a pack especially if you've got kids and they've been outside and they get too warm I always have a pack of wipes in the summer in the fridge and it just cools every it cools them down uh tea towels in the freezer um you know sort of try and keep air flowing through your your bedroom is always a good you know sort of I know it's it's hard because of the light mornings although I did notice at half past five it wasn't as light so we are heading that way um you know and if you're working from home uh, which I think a lot of people still are this month, as far as I'm aware, and I've spoken to, then, you know, there's nothing against sort of having a cold shower. If that then wakes you up and you can't, honestly can't sleep, you know, take a nap during the day. You get a lunch hour, regardless of whether you're working in a business premise or whether you're working from home. Use your time and that time just to recharge yourself. Um and uh, and and yeah and just be kind to yourself you know don't push yourself make sure you clock off and you know I very much have got into the routine of nine till five five o'clock I switch my computer off and that's it then I'm I'm at home I'm not doing any work and that sort of thing and that's really important to help us sleep and I think routine is really important and I think I know I've spoken to a few people within different community groups and and they're kind of like oh I've been up since half two I don't know what's going on but it's the change in routine there's no routine anymore so if you try and maintain a routine as much as you can even though you're working from home it does help with your sleep um when your body doesn't know what schedule you're on you know your sleep you might find I very often find I'll fall asleep really early because I've had a very busy day and then I'll get up at half two and that's it ping I'm awake um you know and I know a lot of people are having that same problem so you know but I do try and then either you know lie that you know don't get up and start cleaning the house or that sort of thing you know do relaxation exercises try and stay in that dark calm environment um and even if you don't get back to sleep and you your anxiety is going because you're thinking oh, I've got to go you know log on to work at nine I'm going to be so tired you know just sort of have that sort of back thought that well you know, even if I got an hour or two between five and seven, I can still have a nap this afternoon. And and it's, yeah, just managing that anxiety because there's nothing worse when you can't sleep and you sat there and think, oh, I've got to start work or and anything like that. Um, I chose the subject for time to talk because one of the biggest um, influences of mental health at and a decline in good mental health is um, 
is your sleep and if we're not getting enough rest if we're not getting enough rest for our, our brain to go into that sort of um i think it's called edm don't quote me um where it then processes what we've seen and experienced through the day um you know it will start to fatigue and with that fatigue you'll start to feel uh, you know sort of despondent can't you know you know when people say oh i've lost my get up and go it's not that you you necessarily your body's tired it's that like you're mentally tired because obviously you're not getting that restful period for your brain to re to to re recharge and to regenerate and uh, one of the biggest factors or certainly sectors of work um that i find you know more more likely to develop uh, trouble with their mental health um due to that sleep um sort of not happening is shift workers um now if anybody's ever had to work shifts <laughs> um i have done it for a little bit and i i did i was doing nights at one point um you just don't ever seem to recover um and if you're doing long spells of of shift work so i'm talking about things like nurses and doctors um you know care staff uh police officers ambulance paramedics fire service they're all doing very 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 long hours um and they could go literally from three days of day shifts to mediumly late shifts to then four nights their bodies are not actually ever getting time to properly recuperate um and it's you know and this is why i wanted to talk about the benefits and the importance of managing mental health and sleep um it's a bit difficult within the public sectors at the moment i know that we're very, you know they're very busy and a lot of um holidays have been cancelled people have been pulled out of leave um you know but it's working with your surrounding support network that when you are off your shift you are getting the rest that you need and it is very hard especially if it's the daytime you've done a night shift i mean i don't to be honest for me when i did night shifts by the second night shift i used to come home and literally that was me out for the for the day i think by the time you get to your second one your body kind of gets into that mode um but it is such a big um influence to to decline in mental health um and you know it's something that really you know we need to be be aware of in our lives no i definitely definitely agree like last week we've been doing my um company we are global so trying to get everyone times in was really really hard um and last week was my first week of doing like really really weird times and i am a routine queen I just love <laughs> routine and i don't break it and i had to break it because i work and it, mm. i can't explain to you i was i mean I, you spoke you spoke to me as well but i was really miserable really short really my because i'm obviously a very bubbly person and i was not bubbly last week but because i know because my body's got used to it this mm -hmm. week say i feel a bit better but it is I think because I go into routine routine quite quickly, it's easy for me. But for some people, mm -hmm. like I said, they don't know what's coming or going. And I do feel like I do wish that there was fairer ways to help that out because having an, an extremely early than an extremely late, your body just can't keep up with it. And our mm -hmm. body will tell us more than anything. Like more than our bodies will tell us more than what our brain and our heart are telling us. It will just stop. Like mm -hmm. our or like you can just faint you could just you could be watching this you, you could be watching something and fall asleep and that's a, that's a sign that your body's going okay let's go sleep do you know what i mean absolutely that happens to me more than i'd like to admit if i'm honest um <laughs> <laughs> um which yeah so i think i mean I'd like to hear from anybody listening, uh, please drop us a, an email. Um, at, we'll put all the contact links uh, at the bottom of the video. Um, but how are you managing? Um, I, can't, I haven't come up with an idea, especially at the moment on how um, sort of shift work can be improved um, so that, you know, sort of our frontline workers are getting the rest that they need. Um, 
because I know also that it is a very continual job that, you know, there are some shifts that, you know, paramedics, police, firemen, carers um, don't stop. They don't stop. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's quite difficult to say, oh, I'm going for a lunch hour if you're in the middle of a, of a rapid response. So, um, you know, I'd like to hear a bit more and I'd like to see um, services really kind of campaigning for better mental health support within these kinds of frontline services. I don't think there's enough. I think it needs to be looked at. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it's, I mean, what would you do? What would you say if you, you know, with, the, I mean, you obviously love in the heat. Um, and I am, a, I just I love it and stuff, but I'd say some stuff that um, has helped me. I mean, I go through stages because I can suffer with like, uh, with really bad nightmares which sounds ridiculous but I used to be with someone who suffered with nightmares as well and <laughs> getting us both in bed you didn't what's gonna come on we look like molested people I'm telling you <laughs> <laughs> um, there's certain stuff that has helped and, I, and has helped quite a lot of people and they are so stereotypical which is I hate like this is me just learning what's worked um, and a lot of people have agreed is get off your phone and your TV and anything that's got that light an hour before bed. And I know I sound like a mom or someone old, but my God, does it make a difference? Because one, you're not got the worry of what you're looking at, but most of the stuff that people are looking at now is pretty sad and pretty upsetting. There's not that much happy stuff out there unless you're looking at a dog video or something. Do you know what I mean? So it's the content that's out there is quite sad. So you don't want to go to bed thinking about something sad. Yeah, it sounds like probably cook like you know hippy dippy again but and the light it's been proven that the light will keep you up it it makes you feel like you should stay up there's something about it i'm not gonna be all scientific because that's not me so go off your phone an hour before bed um try and read and read something i went to bed once trying to read something about like i think it was like russell brand's addictions because i was like i love russell brand so much but we didn't that before bed was a bit <laughs> they weren't brilliant <laughs> they weren't brilliant yeah. at all um but so yeah read something that is, is you know is gonna help uh, and it's soothing and if it is a bit of a thriller and you like watching horror stuff and you don't mind all that stuff read but at the read not too much don't overpower yourself if you feel tired and fall asleep but just have a good read and another thing that helps me is i've got really into like oils at the moment Mm -hmm. so I have like lavender oil or I've brought like these little sets that you can get from Amazon or there's some boots like these little ball on oils and I've got one that's like one's called happy one's called stress free one's called sleep better and then there's another one I don't know what that was called but and I put them on like you know your your, your, queen, your pulse, pulse, pulse pulse yeah put them there and then Another one, this is going to sound really hippie-ish, but I have like a, like a special light. <laughs> I sound like a kid, but it's like, a, I forgot what they're called, salt lamps. I have a few salt lamps and that light again is soothing for you. And mm -hmm. I always have the window open. I always have the window open, even in the winter. You need some good wearing. But I my hint. I I absolutely agree. I can't sleep with the window closed, which is a nightmare when you've got such a reactive dog like Teddy. Oh, um, honestly, <laughs> I think he thinks he's guarding the whole corner of this road. Um, but he's getting better now. He's getting better. Um, but yeah, I know I need that fresh air. I think when you're waking up in a, in a, in a room that's had no air, no, no circulation, it can make you feel very groggy. Um, well, well, what I huh? you, like, you smell yourself and you just smell like oh god that's just everything just smells all icky and sweaty and horrible but no yeah. yeah sleep smell um i uh what i will say is i lo absolutely love all those ideas um i will say though that obviously there may be some listeners that um may suffer from dyslexia or any learning difficulties <laughs> Yeah, so what I um, have found really helps with my children um, is, and you can actually get quite a lot of them now, uh, either for free or it's audio books. Podcasts and audio books have been my absolute lifesaver. I've never watched TV anymore. I just obsessed. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> what, what a brilliant idea, but sorry to interrupt them. 
No, 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 it's fine. Um, so yeah, audiobooks. Um, uh, I will, I can't off the top of my head think of anywhere. Um, and uh, that does, but we will have a look and, and put something on the Facebook page. Um, uh, to if we can find any free links for people to sign up to get free audiobooks. Um, I always find music helps. Yeah. Um, you know, so anything that doesn't involve overstimulating your brain. Uh, I was falling asleep to TV and uh, I, I was sort of really struggling. I suffer from vivid um, nightmares um, and that's part of my mental mental health um, I, where it is at the minute and obviously within my recovery and there will be oh the amount of times some nights I'll jump out of bed about twice a night or I'll sit up really sharply and poor Teddy's exhausted because he won't leave my side. Uh, there's a couple of times he's gone flying off the bed because I've jumped and uh, the duvet's gone and he's gone and you know and he'll just come back and he'll sit and if I'm being particularly sort of um, sort of tossing and turning <clears throat> he'll sit next to the bed and he'll make noises to try and wake me up. Oh God, stop! He's just gorgeous. I know, I know. He's just he is. She's just a, such a gorgeous boy. He was sitting on the chair next to me, and he is now lying on the on the on the floor where it's nice and cool. He was huffing a lot last night because he was so hot, and he couldn't get comfortable. And obviously, I was tossing and turning. And uh, he'd lie in the bed for a bit, and then he'd get too hot because I was radiating. I think the the same heat as the song. Um, and then he'd jump down and he'd flop. You just hear him flop on the floor because I've got wooden floors. And he sighs really loudly, as I have to say, for God's sake. Um, you know, and I was like, I'm really sorry, Ted. I am. Um, I've got a bit of a tooth abscess, so I don't know whether it's that that's causing me to feel really warm or whether it's just the, the temperature in, in general. Or I could be perimenopausal. Nobody knows. Um <laughs> <laughs> I think as well as thinking um, is could help sleeping and it's not to activate it if you have got learning difficulties because trust me I understand the pain mm -hmm. have you seen these new colouring books yes now that I mean I love painting but these colouring books I mean one they look amazing when they come out when people colour them in I'm like oh my god like Vincent van Gogh it's just been brought from B&M for a quid and you can just do it yourself. It's amazing. And yeah. that, doing a little bit of that and just getting into the mood of it, you know, it's relaxing, it's chilling. Um, I don't know if there's a little idea I had then. So the, one of the reasons why um, they, a lot of mindful coaches will encourage people to colour in is it refocuses your brain. So in particular, if you uh, suffer from anxiety or an anxiety disorder, um, you will may find that you sort of got lots and lots of things always on your head. And by focusing on colouring in, your brain is concentrating on that task. And by doing that, you're taking your head out of the space where it's overthinking and you're anxious. And it can refocus that. So that then calms your body down. It calms your heart rate down. So I would very much recommend, especially if you've got children or teenagers. I know that, you know, it's that time of year, isn't it? As it sets are out um, or end of year results are out. Or I, I get confused. I don't know what it is. But, um, you know, and you do find that, you know, I think far too much pressure is put on children nowadays. They're not children for any period of time and then schools are like you need to do sets and this and that and you know need to get all these grades and you know and and that's a whole different subject you know about parenting children so that we don't impact their mental health is a big thing for me as the parents um you know I very much believe that you know my children are going to grow up to be who they are you know, and me pressurizing them at eight or nine to get good SATs results so that the government can tell me where they should be on this scale that somebody sat and, and decided that they had to be on. You see, I'm much to the despair of the school. I'm like, well, you know what? If I had a choice, they wouldn't be sitting them because they oh, will develop. Exactly. Oh, yeah. oh, this is going to be a different subject because I am. I've already just got hot and bothered even thinking of this because the idea of exams and SATs and yeah. 
Um, and another thing I did think as well is it'd be really, really good to find out, um, as well as key workers, because when you're talking about parents, is, I know this is mm. close to home because obviously my niece is severely disabled, but mm. parents that have children who have mental disorders or yeah. who have disabilities and how the parents help them to sleep and also how they conquer sleep themselves because I know that when my sister, my sister can go through ups and downs of sleep because obviously I'm panicking and worrying and, mm -hmm. and, and then going around a child. So it'd be really, really good to hear from what parents with children with disabilities, both mentally and physically, how they cope with sleeping. So I'm thinking we're going to have to do like a sleep point two <laughs> episode. Yeah. Definitely yeah. love to learn a bit more about that and get some hints and tips out there for everyone. Yeah, and I, do, I think you're right. I think, you know, I know of, you know, there have been parents I've met across along the way that, you know, their children have severe sleep apnea um, or have um, sleep apnea, which is a contributing factor to other um, not, uh, disabilities. And um, I couldn't get my words out then, um, you know, and, and how they manage that anxiety. And, and I think a lot of our sleep issues are around anxiety and it's the inability to slow our brain down to allow it to get into that relaxed state because we've almost become the society where, you know, you need to work all these hours, you need to be this, you need to be that. And, and you know, there's so much pressure from even, like I say, from small children. Um, you know, and I, I on Twitter, um, there was a police officer who uh, follows the hub and I follow him and he was saying he was going on uh, his rest days and he felt really anxious because he was busy doing some work on some cases and now he's had to take his rest days because they work very long hours, but he was worried that he was letting those families down. And and then so he then thought well I'm not going to be able to really rest and it's again it's just all this pressure all the time and I think it's very important if whatever reason that you're struggling with your sleep or whatever that we do look at you know talking about it and then like you say getting ideas and and some other people that have tried different things it's all about trying what works for you um you know I can't sleep in the dark because I'm scared of the dark so um which is ridiculous I know everybody has a fear everyone has their own little fears everyone some people are scared yeah. of monkeys and, and stuff like that and clowns and that might be weird to us but to that person that's petrifying do you know what I mean so no that is being scared of the dark is so common as well so don't be worried about that Vanessa at all yeah. Yeah, so that's my irrational fear. So I can't sleep in a dark house. Um, and uh, and then, oh, the other night, um, Teddy scared me. He was lying on the end of my bed and he launched off my bed barking as if, you know, oh, somebody there. And he ran at my, my door and I had the bathroom light on and I just thought, oh, no, this is it. Somebody's in the house. And he just kept, he stood at the door, just barking, barking, barking. And then he looked down the stairs and he was barking and my heart was in my mouth. I thought, right, I'm going to have to go and see if there's anybody in the house. So I took my phone, <laughs> I had it ready to call 999. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, came down, let him out. He sniffed a lot outside and um, I put every light on in the house. I'm not, it's not like those horror movies. I'm not that stupid. I switch lights on as I'm entering rings. This is not the movies. I'm like, why don't you switch a light on? Um, but yeah, and I couldn't get back to sleep after that. So I did, I, I, I like literally left just about every light on uh, and I slept with my lamp on because I just thought, don't, it's not like him. It's not like him to, to bark like that. But, um, I think it was the hedgehog uh, in the garden that he must have must have heard, and also we've had foxes. So, but yeah, so <laughs> yeah, like what can, what can make nightmares or you worry or can be anything a slight bang, um, like the other night one of my things like cause I stick things all over my walls. One of the one of them fell off, but I. My God, did I jump out of my skin. Wow. Mm. Wow, because I was like, whoa. And you do because when you're asleep or when you're not, like, when you're asleep or dozing, when you're shocked, it's made even a bigger deal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. 
It does. It does feel like, um, I, I mean, I, I, I'm quite hypervigilant anyway. Um, so, you know, even the day I'll jump. But when I have, uh, especially when I was more poorly um, and I was very hypervigilant all the time, it used to feel like I was being shocked. Like I used to get like an electric shock up my spine. It was hor really horrible. Um, you know, and your kind of heart goes and you think, oh, you know, and, and that was happening to me like two or three times a day. Um, uh, so, yeah, it was quite horrendous <laughs> with regards to, to that, yeah. You're going to have to make some posts of how people get over that then and how you got over that because I think that's that definitely needs to be told because there might be different levels to it, do you know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's especially common with people who suffer from complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which is what I have, um, or just normal PTSD, um, you know, and your body kind of goes into, you see, you're always in that heightened um, space of hypervigilance. Um, and there are ways that I've, I've worked really hard um, to kind of increase my tolerance to noises and that sort of thing. Uh, and I am a lot better now. Um, but, you know, I still got a long way to go. I still jump. I still um, sort of, you know, I, I find it very hard to go out in the evenings where I've got to walk anywhere and that sort of thing. But, you know, it's it's baby steps. It's why I started this, you know, this charity. It's about sort of sharing my experiences to say, you know, this is what's worked for me. And I want to help people find the same help and support that I did. And I've been like, well, you're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it by each We're episode. Doing it. Woo, woo. And <laughs> just to let everyone know before we wrap this up is, um, and we are going to do a sleep point too, definitely. Because um, it's yeah. just, that's never ending. But some good news is on the way. Um, Vanessa has been working very, very hard on a new website, a new yeah, app. Yeah. And we're getting a YouTube page just for us to go. So... Well, it's a lot's going on and it's brilliant and we're actually going to we've actually got a date to actually see each other in the books which is I know. I know I know I'm very excited um but yeah so hopefully by then uh, I'm hoping to get the website up and live uh, you'll be able to book services um we're rolling out um we're rolling out the talks in the schools about mental health to different um settings uh we're still rolling out uh although you know it's like trying to bait a shark with a sardine um trying to get uh supporting our frontline services and going out and talking to them about mental health uh so if you are from a frontline service and you would like to get involved um you know watch the space you can book the seminars through the website um, and then the biggest part of the website, which is the most important bit, it's the advocacy, um, our advocacy um, service, which is basically anybody who's looking to get some, um, some mental health support um, in their uh, local area. And surprisingly, I've started getting people dripping in from America, a lot from America. Um, so I've got a couple of cases I need to try and try and link them up with some local services within a, within their little towns in America now. Um, you know, I'm not one to ever turn anyone away that's looking for help. So, I, I you know, I, I have made it very clear. We're not a crisis centre. We're not a crisis line, but I'm here to put give you the tools to start to make those journeys and those choices for yourself. Um, and then we will always be here to kind of advocate for, advocate for you. Um, but it is about you and your mental health journey so yeah lots and lots of that so we're hoping to get our documentary refilmed in the new year i think now um freedom to go out woo -woo. yeah yeah so there's lots and lots and lots of things coming up lots of things that we're trying to get put together we're sort of you know reaching out to as many people as we can to kind of talk and talk about mental health and how why it's so important so watch the space so yes well we'll end it there everyone try and sleep well a little bit better since so our advice if you've got any advice for us please do get in touch you can get in touch yeah. with us on instagram facebook linkedin everywhere and um, so again we'll put all the information at the bottom but thank you very much for your time that is fire and 
Vanessa. Woo! <laughs>